Great to have you back on Breakfast Central. Now let's get into the newspapers as we kick off the second half of Breakfast Central and share with you the major stories making headlines. We kick off on the Daily Trust newspapers this morning. It says that Israeli forces killed 3,308 Palestinians, 500 killed in Gaza hospital, 2,417 children, women among casualties. Palestinian President Jordan King canceled meeting with Biden. And, you know, I would say that I find it very, very disheartening, very heartbreaking, very sickening. Um, how we can read these stories and just move on with our lives like these aren't human beings. And we've been able to, you know, from, you know, the most, you know, toxic propaganda, been able to justify somehow, some way, maybe not vocally. I mean, there's people who are, you know, verbal and vocal about their justification for these deaths. But somehow, some way, we need to find a place in our hearts to see how these people don't really matter. These human beings and these lives don't really matter. We've somehow been able to find a moral compass to give to Israel to continue to murder thousands of people. This is three. I need you to imagine what 3,300 lives, you know, is really. And don't, you know, tell yourself that there is any justification for this because there isn't. Whatever Hamas did or didn't do is no justification for 3,000 people to be murdered because that's what it is. This is not, you know, a, a war. You know that we're talking about here this is not a palestinians attacking israelis and israelis firing back and people are dying on both sides no this is israel simply going on for days now bombing and killing thousands of people um thousands of palestinians i'm talking about women and children and 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 um, um everybody else that you can imagine it is disgusting and i hate also how over time we've we've somehow learned you know how muslims and arab lives don't matter it's okay when you hear about a car bomb or whichever you know, type of attack that kills hundreds of people in these parts of the world, and the world just moves on. It is very, very painful. All right. Moving away from Israel and Palestine, let's come back to Nigeria. Um, oh, well, but that's basically the only thing on the screen, you know, with, with regards to war. Um, Biden must end Israel's war on Gaza. He is, is, you know, to a large extent, very, very much to blame also for all of this. The United States government, to be precise, not just Joe Biden, but the United States government on, and the warmongers that make up that government. All right, let's move away from the Daily Trust newspaper and see the front page of the Punch. On the Punch newspaper, the big story says 35,000 wage award, Labour gives governors ultimatum, 61 million Nigerians to get 1 trillion naira. If you remember the 35,000 naira wage award that was referred to by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on his 63rd on the 63rd independence day speech and uh, ultimatum given by nlc tuc applicable to states kano gombe nlc chapters and orders 50 million households get 25,000 naira monthly program will reduce poverty says well back i don't know quite i don't know I, i'm not quite sure exactly how if this will re reduce poverty if this will re reduce poverty i really don't know about it free israeli hostages France, Turkey, urge Hamas on page 7. Ondo lawmakers meet Ganduje, suspend um, Ajelatiwa impeachment. Um, that's on the front page of uh, the Punch newspaper. We're still, of course, looking at the headlines. It says, Ondo lawmakers meet Ganduje, suspend Ajelatiwa impeachment on page 8. Many feared killed as oil security agents and herders clashed. 14 injured as two BRT vehicles collide in Lagos. What, what is going on? It's a rainy season in Lagos. The propensity to have an accident is higher. So can we please appeal to people, as we get to the peak of the rainy season, to drive slower, to be more careful, to wait if they have to wait, to leave later if they have to leave later. Because at the end of the day, what we're seeing on my way to work yesterday, I saw a car that had climbed the culvert. This is the rainy season, the road is slippery, and we just need to drive more carefully. All right? At the top of the paper, Tinumbu ministers face first assessment January. All right? January would have been enough time, uh, it would seem, and then we'd start to analyze the work they've done and the necessity of this incredibly large cabinet. Protesters storm National Assembly, oppose EFCC chair's confirmation. Why I want 550 million Naira damages for compulsory retirement, says the ex-DIG. Wow, that's an interesting one there. He wants 550 million Naira damages and he, because he was uh, retired compulsory. If you want to find out what the details are, check out page 
six, it seems. Page six is not quite clear. Page six or page eight of the Punch newspaper. Uh, that's all that we have on the Punch. Let's head to our next paper. Right away from the Punch this morning, the Daily Independent newspapers comes up next. It says the federal government's cash transfer targets 15 million households to gulp 1.125 trillion naira that really could have been used for other forms of development in Nigeria. But we're going to, you know, give it to people, you know, do cash transfer. It's going to be burnt out in a couple of days, maybe weeks, and we're back to square one. Um, Labour Party tackles federal government over 57.6 billion SUVs for 360 reps. Um, but of course, it's not just the Labour Party. I think people have also called on members of the House of Representatives that are Labour Party members uh, to hear what they would say. Are they going to be receiving these SUVs also? Um, and even, I mean, not just Labour Party, the opposition parties, you know, in, in, in the House of, uh, House of Representatives. Are they going to, you know, take the SUVs also or are they going to speak against it? Are they going to, you know, at least, you know, show Nigerians that they are different and they do not agree with the idea of spending these billions of naira on SUVs? Maybe not. November 11, gubernatorial polls, INEC raises concerns of a number of litigations. Uh, senators take sides as Senate President Akpabio and Ali Ndume clash. Uh, it did, of course, go not just Ali Ndume, a couple of other people. I, I also watched videos yesterday uh, where they complained about the way the Senate President is running the Senate and how certain bills are being passed without, you know, going through voting, you know, by the Senate, uh, uh, by senators, basically. Blasts kill over 500 at Gaza Hospital, Hamas, Israel trade, blame. Regardless of what it is, there's still 500 lives that have been lost. And like I said before, it is, it is sickening how Arab and Muslim lives almost do not matter when it comes to um, when we have these discussions. I, I just to remind everyone that when you place the moral compass and say, oh, but Hamas attacked, you know, Israel, um, not every Palestinian is Hamas. Not every Palestinian supports Hamas. Uh, a, a ton of the people that are being killed today do not in any way. Well, I would say do not necessarily support Hamas and it doesn't even matter if they do they did not commit any crimes the only crime that they've currently committed is being Palestinians and they can't even leave Gaza the places that are being bombed they can't even if it's, it's, it's described as an open air prison so you can't even go anywhere um so you can't continue to murder these people and say oh well Hamas you know you know attack Israel these aren't Hamas members these are civilians it's pretty much the same moral compass that was given to the United States in, in, in 2001 and 2003 to attack Iraq and Afghanistan. With the whole, you know, the comparison was, oh, you know, but they, you know, they flew planes into buildings. These people who are being killed, the hundreds of thousands of people that died in Iraq and Afghanistan, didn't fly planes into buildings. They didn't. They simply, the only crime that they committed were being Iraqis or being from Afghanistan. Hundreds of thousands of people that have been killed by the West in the last decade and more in the so-called war against terrorism didn't commit any crime, but simply were citizens of those countries. So please, there's no moral justification for it. You can condemn Hamas all you want and I will join you 100%. But there's no justification for these people that are being killed while the world looks away and finds some reason to not see their lives as important. Same thing happens here in Nigeria, where you say that the Nigerian army, you know, who well, hasn't happened in a, in a while, attacks the Shiites or attacks people in northern Nigeria. And, you know, you hear that, you know, dozens were killed in, you know, friendly fire. If you remember the Rand bombing in 2015, where the Nigerian Air Force fired into a, you know, a, a wedding or, a, or something that killed 150 people. We moved on. It's very, very unfair. Arab, Muslims, northern you know, lives as important as any other life in, you know, on this planet. It's no different in Palestine today. All right. Um, let's move away from the Daily Independent. Okay, well, just a few other stories. Um, it says here, OB, not um, Tinubu, won 2023 presidential poll. Says Babachir Lawal. I'm going to clarify second men of Eric Air Staff to Nigeria Eagle. And also, um, Tinubu appoints a Liu, new ICPC chairman. Okparo Du as a secretary. AGF, AFDB to unlock $5 billion financing for women SMEs. Uh, senators take sides as Senate President. Well, I spoke about this um, earlier. Um, these are the stories on the Daily Independent newspapers this morning. Do we have one more paper? I think the um, Guardian. Yes, let's look at the Guardian this morning. On the front page of the Guardian, 2023 elections by court order. INEX credibility sinks as 94% contested post awaits tribunal. That I don't know if we've ever seen this amount of contested results 
ever since we, we, we started voting. I don't know if we've seen this much, but their credibility is sinking. It's tanks, definitely. Budget report shows states heavily dependent on federal allocation for budgets. Uh, still on the front page this morning, uproar in Senators Akpabio Ndume face-off gets messier. We have, of course, made reference to some of the drama going on in the Senate. Of course, as regards, even himself, Senator Elisha Abu had spoken about it on the last time on the show. We hope that you can get a clearer picture when we have him the second half. Tinubu begins 1.125 trillion Naira conditional cash transfers to 50 million households. So, again, we got yours. Not yet. Not yet, okay. Not expecting. Not All interested right. either. You're not interested. Ah, please, if they give you send to me. And uh, we have here inflation may deter investors from right issue as six firms raised 22 billion Naira. House probes 183.9 billion Naira COVID 19 intervention fund. Four years later, and we are still probing stories. We're still probing corruption allegation regarding what happened in 2019 such a shame subsidy no alternative to local refining capacity discordant tunes persist over legality of appointing ministers of state of course we've taken the budget headline and i think that will be all okay there's some numbers we can see here about the 2023 general elections overview 1,280 political offices were contested in 2023. Wow, that's a lot. 94.4%, that's 1,209 petitions before the judiciary for adjudication. So we have 1,209 of 1,280 political offices being contested and challenged in court. <laughs> okay. We, of course, we keep following with all these cases in the different parts of the country and seeing exactly what the courts decide.